Here in HEHS, school lunch has always been a hot topic. I mean, we love it, then we hate it. And we love and hate it more and more every school day. It's been a few years since the school decided to lock us all out and going up to town to get a slice of pizza, cheeseburger, or a beef patty, or maybe even a tall bottle of CNC soda. And while most of us have gotten accustomed to staying in school lunch program, how satisfied are we actually with it? Is it really worth staying in school? Or are we a little bit agitated with the limited choices and all the trouble we get into just to grab a styrofoam tray of food? To figure out how we truly feel about the school lunch, we surveyed over 100 individuals from grades 10 to 12, most of them being seniors, in order to get their honest take on a stay in lunch. We then interviewed two juniors and two seniors who experienced open lunch firsthand and how they feel about the stay in lunch now. Hearing both sides out, we also had input from the woman who's in charge of the school lunch program for all of those schools. So, is in-school lunch really worth it? The in-school lunch program here at the GSS allows every single student to get a healthy, nutritious school lunch. So they say, I mean, well, while we're still in school, I mean, of course, we can find better food going up town. Why do we stay in for lunch? Let ACHS class of 2012ers Yachtley and Lorraine explain. Why we stay in for lunch? Well, I guess I can make an assumption. I could guess that it's because like kids would leave for lunch and wouldn't come back to class. The students was like smoking and having sex, not coming back. In the summer of 2010, the Roosevelt Board of Education looked back on an underperforming and very disappointing school year at HHS. Writing was up, test scores were low, the school was falling apart, and students had too much freedom at lunch. To change that, and among other things, the borough was chosen to receive a multi-million dollar grant by the Obama administration, a cash flow that we now know as the SIG for School Improvement Grant, allowing the entire Roosevelt Public School District to receive over $4 million for three years. The other big change to students came in the form of a trailer, a slimmed down lunch period on their schedule, and on top of it all off, it became illegal to walk out of school during lunch. It's been over a year since ACHS changed for the better. And the only way to know if the students accept the new school lunch program is to, well, ask them. In your opinion, is the lunch in the cafeteria appetizing? The hot lunch isn't. Cold lunch is sometimes. Uh, it depends what days and stuff. Like the sandwiches are, but the hot food, not so much. Uh, well, I like the fries. I mean, sometimes it's good. I like when they have nachos. Here on the student side of the closed lunch debate, we also spoke to Terry, the lunch lady in charge of the whole school lunch operation in Roselle. Do you think the, the system for the lunch program can be improved, and so why? Um, it's just been improved, and I think we're at the top right now. My personal feeling. After listening to both sides, the students do seem to have a love-hate relationship to school lunch. But do the students feel that the school lunch is at the top. And the hot lunch is not always good. Sometimes it's hair in it. Sometimes it's not cooked all the way. The fries are good. But, um, nah, not, no. Spaghetti, I don't like that response. <laughs> On our senior survey, we asked 68 seniors several questions in regards to school lunch. The first question we asked is if the food service at HHS have improved. Only 11% of seniors said yes. We also conducted another survey for all the other grades and combined them with similar questions that were given to the seniors. The first question we asked on that survey is what type of lunch do they as students purchase? 52% saying salad, 17% saying sandwiches, and 31% saying hot lunch. Does a shorter time for lunch affect you from getting served? Yeah, because like... I have to run to my locker, throw my books, and I gotta run to the cafeteria. The line is long. I have to rush and get my food, and then when I'm not done, I have to stay a while and be late for my next class. The lines are like a pack. With common mistakes, simple neglect, and long lines, can the worst case scenario in distributing school lunch happen at HEHS? Have the food ever ran out in the lunchroom? No, we have plenty of food. Are you a victim of not receiving lunch because they have run out? Mm, no. No, but like when I reach the line, they always take forever to get my fries though. Hmm, how about our 2012ers, whose lunch, by the way, is the last one of the day? Period seven from 114 to 139. Yeah, yes. I mean, you have to like get, I don't know, like nachos instead of fries. When you're like, I don't know, when you're hungry. 
It's crazy. Yes, in the, um, the cold line, they ran out of sandwiches. In our senior survey, we asked the seniors, was there ever a time when food ran out? 88% said yes, while 12% said no. On the open survey, we asked, is there enough time to finish lunch? And only 7% of students said that there's always time to finish lunch. Which brings us to our next topic. With mixed feelings about the school lunch and even more of its flaws, we conducted our own investigation. Is it worth paying for the school lunch? We discovered that prices for snacks in the school lunch program are outrageous. For instance, a can of Snapple in the school lunch program, only 11.5 ounces, sells for $1.25 while a much bigger 23 ounce can of Arizona iced tea at a liquor store costs only a dollar. Even the 50 cent potato chips and the 8 ounce slushies for one dollar are overpriced. While only a pack of three cookies for a dollar or a pretzel a dollar twenty-five stays at a reasonable price. Talking about the actual lunches, the price of lunch varies on the annual total income a student's parent or guardian makes. At the time of this production, the current rates were free, 40 cents for reduced, or two dollars for full or higher income families. Setting that aside, what benefits Miss Terry thinks the school lunch program may have? Well, I mean, I see that more kids are staying in school because they're not leaving. Forcing the students to stay in school and learn? Extremely good point. Do the students share the same opinion? Do you feel as though the mandatory staying lunch is effective? Uh. Do you think the mandatory staying lunch is effective? Yes. Yeah. No. I mean, kids should have their own like relaxation outside. It doesn't. It shouldn't matter. And it's it's packed in, so it gets hot a lot. Um. I don't know, cause like I think it. I don't think it's effective. I don't. I don't think it's good enough. The lines are longer. Because they run out of food and all that stuff, and then we stay here hungry, and then they make us spend money on the food that they have, which is not even an appetizer. Mixed feelings about the benefits. Can they be further explained? So I think it's benefiting the children too, because if they can't get out of the building, then they're staying. They're going to stay in class, and maybe they might learn. Because I've been here for 21 years, and I see a big difference that the kids are not leaving. So before I seen that they were never coming back. On the last question of the senior survey. We asked the seniors how they rate the food service. Is it great? Is it good? Or is it media core? 76% of seniors said that the food service at HHS this year is media core. The last question we asked on the other survey is that the cafeteria staff is courteous and pleasant. 70% said that sometimes they're pleasant. 15% said that they're always pleasant. And only 15% said they're never pleasant. Touching on the basis, what exactly can be improved in regards to the school lunch program? I mean, because they don't want kids being late to school. I mean, after the, after the late bell, they don't want to be late. Sometimes it's snowing outside or raining. Stay inside. Pretty cool. I mean, you'll be, you'll be all right in the winter because it's so hot. I don't think there's any benefits because we have to stay in and there's, even, and there's a shorter time, so I don't know how that, I don't know how that benefits us. Could the system be improved? Yeah. It could be improved a lot. A lot of lunches for one. They make more They could at least let us order out. Get some, get some food from all other places. We don't got no money for that. Since the staying lunch began in 2010, which was about the school year, the economic loss, if any, to the barrel result is unknown. Due to certain limitations and other complications, we were unable to score any view of any food joints or facilities in Roselle. And with that, summarizing this, school lunch in Roselle has both been a controversial issue for the Abraham Clark High School and for the borough of Roselle. There's both positives and negatives we can all say about this, but the thing that matters the most is staying in school, learning, and concentrating on what we need most, education.